Now that we've calculated our average lead time and maximum lead time and we've put them into the template, let's revisit the formula for safety stock to see what else we need. So we'd mentioned before that we need four different values to be able to calculate our safety stock. So two of those were related to the lead time, which we have already calculated. So the two that are left are related to our demand. So there's the maximum daily demand and the average daily demand. And again, I'm using daily. You can use weekly if you wish. You just need to keep those units consistent throughout this whole template. So how do we figure out our maximum daily demand and our average daily demand? I'm going to show you two different ways that people use. So one is related to historical sales and the second one is related to issuing a forecast of future demand. So one is past and one is anticipated future. So if I click on the historical sales tab, you'll see that like the calculations tab, there's this mixture between cells that are white and cells that are an orangey color. You only need to type into the ones that are orange. So if you look over here where we have our SKU and our description, there's actually a formula. So when you type into the orange cells here on the calculation tab and you populate it with your SKU numbers or your ID numbers and your description, it will automatically flow that information over onto this tab. And that's because we want to keep the data in exactly the same order on each tab so that the formulas all work. So what do we do with this tab? So we can actually take a look at the historical sales and I've programmed the spreadsheet to do 12 months, sort of the last 12 months worth of your sales. You can certainly edit the template any way you wish. I haven't locked any of this down so you are free to fully customize this template. Since we are in April 2022, I'm taking a look at the historical sales from April 2021 all the way through to March 2022 because that's our last complete month since I'm recording this video in April 2022. So if you populate this tab with all of the numbers for your historical sales over the last 12 months, then over here in these white cells, so these are all formulas, it's going to calculate for you based on your historical sales what the average daily demand is and what the maximum daily demand is. And therefore we now have all of the values that we need for the safety stock number and it will calculate that safety stock value for you. Now you do not need to then copy and paste these values over onto the calculation spreadsheet because if we take a look at that and this is the safety stock based on historical sales, it's actually a formula. So it's a white cell. You don't have to touch it. It'll move the information over for you. Now, what if you didn't want to base this on the last 12 months of sales? Maybe you just want to base it on the last six or the last three. It's really a judgment call and the key question you're trying to answer is how much of my history do I think is best representative of my future? So do I think that the last six months worth of my sales are what I think I'm going to see in the next six to 12 months or do I really like to use the full 12 months? Now if you're a seasonal business, I do recommend that you cover at least 12 months of your history when you're calculating your average daily demand and your safety stock values. Now obviously the numbers you see on the screen are just numbers I've typed into the template to be able to use, so just populate these orange cells with your exact history and it will calculate your average daily demand, maximum daily demand, and safety stock value. Now why do I also have a forecast tab? On this tab we're looking at historical sales but if you're a company that has stocked out a lot on products over the last 12 months you'll find that your safety stock values and your reorder point are based on selling quantities that were much lower than what you could have sold if you had not had severe out-of-stock issues in the past 12 months. So I have clients that also, instead of using the history, they want to use what they think the sales are going to be in the future year. And in that case, what they have put together is a full year forecast. So you can see I've got January 2022 to December 2022. They put together the full year forecast and the exact same formulas are created and we calculate the average daily demand, maximum daily demand, and therefore the safety stock value based on the forecast instead of based on historical sales. Now you'll see that when I did the historical sales, 
I had April 2021 to March 2022 because I'm keeping a rolling 12 months calculation. In the forecast, in most companies, you know, when they do a forecast, they do it once a year. So they just set the forecast for the entire year and they go on from there. They don't reforecast every month because they just don't have time. If you do have time to do that, you are obviously free to keep your forecast running. In this case would be from April 2022 to March 2023. You can make that adjustment. So now the numbers we have are the average daily demand, maximum daily demand, and safety stock based on your forecast for the year. And we have a second set of those values, the average daily demand, maximum daily demand, and safety stock based on the last 12 months of your historical sales. So we've essentially got two sets of calculations going. So if we click over here onto the template, you'll see I've got some columns that are coded in green and some columns that are coded in blue. So I'm actually showing you these values based on your historical sales. These are the ones in green and I'm showing you those same values based on your forecast. So it gives you essentially two answers and you may start to wonder, well, which answer is correct? Which one should I base my decisions on? And that really depends because if you're a company where your historical sales have been, uh, you know, pretty good, pretty sa stable, you haven't done a lot of out of stocking on certain products, then you might be pretty safe in trying to base your um, your product reordering decisions based on your historical sales. If you're like some of my clients where they've recently gone through a lot of out of stocks because of the um, instability of the supply chain, then they actually prefer to use the numbers that are based on the forecast. You can go either way and you can actually look at both of them as well and decide maybe for some of your items you want to base it on the history and maybe for some of your items you want to base it on the forecast. And one of those examples would be the following. So if you're launching a new product, you don't have 12 months of sales history to base your calculations on. So for that product, you might want to base that on a forecast. But maybe you've got a product that you've been selling quite stably for the last five years. You have a lot of good historical sales numbers. For that product, you might want to base your reordering on the historical sales instead of the forecast. So I'm actually showing you both. So let's just look at this first item here. So based on the numbers that we have, on the historical sales, we're saying, okay, we should probably have a safety stock of about 210, but based on the forecast, we're saying, well, we should probably have about 264. It also tells me that the forecast is a little more volatile than what your historical sales have been. And then for each of those, we can now calculate the reorder point. And again, we're gonna have two numbers generated here, one based on the sales history, and one based on the forecasted values. So let's take a look at the formula for the reorder point. It's pretty simple. So it's equal to the safety stock, which we've already calculated, plus the average daily demand, we already know what this number is, times the average lead time in days, and we already know what that number is. So we have all of the information required to calculate the reorder points. So we have a reorder point based on our sales history. We have a reorder point based on our forecast. What do these numbers tell us? So suppose this is a product that you say, yeah, our sales history numbers are really good. So we're going to base our, our reordering on the sales history and not the forecast numbers. When do we want to reorder more inventory? So you want to consider reordering more inventory when you're available. So remember that's available is the amount available to sell. So it's not your on hand, your available number plus what you have inbound on order drops below the reorder point. So I've actually coded the formula for you. So it's going to check when the number of available units, so you need to keep this up to date, plus the amount that you have on order is less than the reorder point number that you've calculated. And I've coded the same thing for the calculations that were based on the forecast. So you can see in some cases, depending on how different your historical sales are from your forecast, in some cases, your history might tell you not to consider reordering this one, but maybe your forecast is, maybe it's a little more optimistic. So that's where I say it's not an absolute data-driven science. Uh, there is some judgment in there that you're gonna have to make. So there's one more question that we need to try and answer. So we've now got a template that says, 
when should I consider reordering my inventory? So this template will calculate that for you and will provide you on some guidance on when you should consider reordering. Now, I always list it as when I should consider reordering versus when I should absolutely order because these are always estimates. There's fluctuation in your data. Um, you know, there may be things that, that are in your data that you haven't considered. So maybe it says that we should reorder when we have 288 units of this based on our sales history. Um, but also maybe you know you're about to do a promotion this year that you didn't run last year that isn't considered in your data. And in that case, I would say put that into the forecast and maybe drive it from there instead of your historical sales. So lots of things to consider. But that final question is, how much should I now order? And this is going to depend on contracts you have with suppliers, you know, how far away and, and how risky are the purchases that you're making. So are they coming from halfway across the world? Are they coming from, you know, three blocks down the road? Lots of factors to, to consider. If you order a higher volume, is that supplier going to give you a price break? then great, maybe you, you can afford to kind of keep more inventory on hand. Maybe you want to order three months worth of inventory instead of two weeks worth of inventory. You know, I have some larger clients where they, they do do volume discounts and they have the cash flow to be able to support ordering and stocking more inventory. Uh, but I also have some smaller companies where cash flow is a little tighter and they prefer to order smaller amounts more often and also because they don't get price breaks for ordering more so they don't really have any reason to do these larger volume purchases. So a lot of factors to consider on how much you're going to order. Uh, so I would suggest you know reviewing your contracts, check out your pricing on each of these items and put all those factors together to try and make a decision on how much you're going to place on each supplier order. So I hope this template helps save you guys a lot of work. You can kind of get your data organized to get it together, better track your inventory management, maybe uh, protect that precious cash flow. And if you have any questions on this template, feel free to kind of send me a message or enter a comment. Good luck.